Hey friends, it's me, your pal Kelly Zimnikas, and welcome to episode number 34 of It'll Be Fine, the now socially distant baking food chat show. This poster here is my brother's old band, South of Bloor, South of Bloor. Check them out on Spotify. They're, they're not together anymore, um, but their music is still available for purchase. <laughs> um, today's show, guys, we're talking food allergies, which you're probably like, oh God, I don't want to lose you. Stay, stay with us for this one. This is a good one because my guest today, uh, her and I have very peculiar food allergies and you may be watching and going, oh my God, I thought I was the only person allergic to chamomile. No, nope, I am. I cannot drink sleepy time tea. I hurl. It's, it's really disgusting. Um, my guest today, by the way, that was a terrible intro. <laughs> Send you love, woman. Amanda Feldman is on the show. <laughs> I'm keeping this in, man. Amanda Feldman is funny as hell. Oh, my God. A great writer, a fantastic producer. She was running a great room at Corners in Richmond Hill, Ontario. Obviously, it's not happening now, but... I'm glad she's on the show because we're getting into food allergies, which I think is a really important discussion to have because you're probably watching and, and know someone or maybe you're someone with, with food allergies and you, you want some comfort. We're bringing the sisterhood. We're here for you, man. We are here for you. And on the show today, we are also offering some love, offering some attention to Feed the Frontlines Toronto, a phenomenal initiative that is getting hot meals to our frontline workers and partnering up with restaurants in Toronto, and it's a win, 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 win. So join us today, and if, if you've got some food allergies, I send you my love, Amanda does too. It's gonna be fine, I promise. It'll be fine, it'll be fine, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. And it's, I mean, when we talked about this, like, it's still not the same as being in the same room as someone, but right. to have the ability to do this when we're forced to be alone is so important for our mental health, I think. Like, it's it's okay. so important for me to be able to reach out to people and, and have these conversations. Absolutely. It's and even just, life. yeah, just doing this show, like, we, we've had to adapt. It'll be fine. Like, I can't have you in the kitchen right now. It's just not the right thing to do. But the fact that we're still going ahead with the show and we're doing these chats like this, like I'm showering and dressing up and it's lovely. Me too. I had a shower. I put on makeup. I put on clothes, which they <laughs> were pointing out that it, it totally clashes with the zebra background, but whatever. It's, yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't think about it. <laughs> I noticed yesterday when I, I, yesterday was my garbage day. So I left the apartment to go do all that. And I realized when I looked at myself in the in the elevator mirror, um, my face mask matched my shirt. I was like, well, that was clever. That's adorable. You can be like, I'm doing it on purpose. And then you can match your eyeshadow to your face mask and your shirt. It's just, people it's love it. People <laughs> appreciate that. Like they really would. They really do. Now I got to say, I had such a ball uh, doing your room out in, in Richmond Hill. You're running a great room at Corners. And you were so amazing. Like, and I'll never forget when you came and co-hosted and you were so amazing and so helpful. It was wonderful. It was like by far one of the best co-hosts I've ever had. So yeah, it was so much fun. <laughs> Such a good time. Do you know how those guys are doing? Have you checked in with, with the bar owners or? I, you know what? So it was actually, it was Doug's birthday. A couple days ago when I, I sent him a message and I didn't hear back from him. Um, I'm hoping he's okay. I did hear back. I did hear from him like a couple weeks ago, just checking in on me, seeing how I was doing. So I don't know exactly. I'm hoping everything's okay. I do. I do think about what's going to happen to comedy. Yeah. This um, and especially the the other venues that. Um, are don't have food or like the other venues like um that just do comedy like right. you know i i i'm concerned about that 
Yeah, most definitely. When whenever we are able, and it'll also be interesting too, like how comfortable people are with being in a room close together. Because yeah. you know, like if you think about the way the seating is set up at, let's say, the corner at John and, and Queen, or yeah. even Absolute, which is a bigger room, you always try to get people like really close together, get that laugh, get up to the front. It's going to be interesting to see when we are able to do that again, how people are going to want to, but you never know. People might want to be close together. Well, no, I mean, I think about even in, in restaurants or large <laughs> gatherings yeah. um, and just, I, I mean, it's, it's insane. Like, cause this isn't, I mean, it's been compared to war. This is not war. This is okay. This is fine. This is doable, but mm-hmm. nonetheless, this is going to cause trauma and I feel like there is going to be a level of post-traumatic stress disorder that people are going to have just fearing other people around them and like invisible germs and all of that like I I was already OCD before this (laughs) so I'm fine (laughs) but everyone else is in trouble I think right (laughs) yeah there's like it's interesting you bring that up because um I I wouldn't consider myself I, I wouldn't consider myself someone with OCD but I do have anxiety there is, and it has always been a general level of complete panic in my brain and has been since I was a kid. So it's interesting how that there's some things that kind of already, I don't know, put you in a little prepared box where you're like, okay, mentally, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a very interesting time of learning of your strengths, your weaknesses, I think ultimately, if we can get out of this just a better person, like a, a more improved version of yourself, yeah. I think you'll have made the most of this because it's it's kind of freaky. <laughs> it really is. And I just like even just being able for people just to be able to maintain their sanity mm-hmm. and their mental health after losing their routine and all the uncertainty and everything. It, yeah. yeah. And, and if they can figure out how to do that now, they'll be better in life in general at handling situations and stuff like that. So absolutely. Yeah. I'm a big believer that there's a big learning opportunity here. It is a horrible time to be living yeah. in, but there's a learning opportunity, either how you absolutely member or. And, and sorry, not just for us, but for the government too, in terms of preparedness and what to do when something like this happens, I think for, and just, you know what, for us as well, in terms of preparedness and everything, because there's so many people, including myself, that kind of just live month to month and don't necessarily figure things out. And um, I, I I had been being better at that before the pandemic. I have tons of canned stuff, so I was OK. But, you know, it, it, it is one of those things where it, you do you do realize that there are inevitable, not inevitabilities, but there are things that you think will never happen and they could happen. Well, that's the thing. Like on a good day, I wouldn't know when I'm going to see you again. You know, like in in general, there's a lot of things about this that aren't necessarily new because we're forced to be apart from each other. We really have to do live in the moment now, you know? Are, is there something you're like making more than usual now that your home may be a bit more something like comforty that you're really gravitating? <laughs> I thought that background would be better for a second. Uh, <laughs> strangely enough, I've always found like a comfort food for me has always been chicken soup and noodles. I just love it. Like maybe it reminds me of home growing up because we used to make a huge pot of chicken soup for the Sabbath every Friday night. And so the whole house would smell like chicken soup and it meant the weekend was there and it was like nice and relaxing for me somewhat. So (laughs) just something about that. And then, you know, especially if you're sick or anything, I love chicken, chicken noodle soup. So I will make vats of chicken soup and freeze them off. And so I've been going through that and um, frozen food, canned food. um, That's really been my only, my only comfort well that and cookies <laughs> I did snuck up on cookies they didn't I um I find cookies because I have all my allergies right so I find cookies I try and find cookies I'm not allergic to from like organic stores um this is I'm slightly allergic to it but this is one I love these so I'm like for the most part I'm not allergic to them so I go crazy on them so that's another that's 
cookies. <laughs> uh, no, I, I totally agree with you on the chicken soup thing. I'm actually, uh, I'm going to make some chicken dumplings. Nice. I'll send you the recipe if you can modify it. Um, what do you use for the dough? Um, I, I haven't, I've actually got the recipe on my, on my bookshelf. I've got to look into it. I haven't made it in years, but I just, I just had this craving the other day of just like, I want to make something that like I used to make when I first moved out on my own and I could figure out how to like make a good big, you know, stock soup or a big yeah. thing, thing. But speaking of food allergies though, um, I, as folks know, I work in a restaurant. I deal with numerous questions every time I've been at work uh, of like, is this in it? Is this in contact? What, you know, this and that. How do you find living with allergies uh, during during this time of isolation? Do you find maybe you're not? It, it's so interesting because I haven't been going out, obviously, to eat. I haven't really been ordering in prepared foods much. Yeah. So when I cook for myself and I'm able to control everything that goes into the food, um, I'm actually less exposed to my, of course, when I eat the cookies that I'm slightly allergic to, um, but I actually get less exposed to the allergies. It's technically it's better for me, like, and it's healthier too to eat in and everything, but. Oh, it's healthier for anybody. Like your, your, your salt contents less, your sugar, your, you know, that's it's, well, sugar, I've been, I have been going crazy with the sugar a little bit. <laughs> so what are your allergies? They are, I feel like if I had it, if I had it, it wouldn't be a book. It would be like a scroll and you would open up and it would just like roll and roll and roll and, and roll. Um, I'm allergic to cow's milk, um, specifically cow's milk, like cow's milk protein. It's not a lactose thing. It's, Ew. are you really? I Holy crap, I didn't know that. So Cat do you drink do you drink oat milk then or do you substitute with I'm I'm an oat milk girl. I've become an oat milk girl. Um but I'm allergic to cassian. Yeah, the protein in milk. Yeah. That's amazing. I have never met anyone else that has that specific allergy. I'm also I'm allergic to celery. Are you really? Yeah. Is it is it because of the nitrites in the celery? For me, uh, it is due to something called cross allergic reaction. So, so it's cooked, is it still the cross contamination? I know I've heard of that. Cooked is fine. I can't eat a raw celery stick. So it's weird because I I have so many another one of my allergies is to nightshades. So I'm allergic to tomatoes. High five. Holy shit! Boom, 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 boom. And I used to love peppers and tomatoes and eggplants and all of it. Like, I would throw eggplant on the barbecue with some, like, salt, and that was it, and I was in heaven. Um, but I, I did go, you know what? I had a wonderful allergist who unfortunately uh, passed away. Oh, no. Uh, he, was such a, he was such a nice guy, too. Um, and uh, since then, I haven't found an amazing, I found a decent allergist, but I haven't found anyone that was as good as him. Yeah. And I have seen different people that have different theories. And some of them say these are intolerances. And some of them say someone believed that my tomato allergy was a cross contamination. However, I still have reactions when it's cooked. So. Yeah, I've, I've, I've been noticing that I'm not eating uh, out, like you say, as, as much as usual, where I might gravitate towards like, um, uh, a dish that maybe is rich in, in tomatoes, because uh, I do enjoy them. Um, yeah. But I don't have them at home very much. Um, but for me, it's it's definitely that that my body thinks I'm around a lot of ragweed. Celery is in the ragweed family, so my environmental allergies are so off the charts, it's why I can't have chamomile. If so you're you, to ragweed. I'm allergic to chamomile, too, and lavender. We need to hug, man. <laughs> how, can I ask you, how old were you when you started figuring out that you had these allergies? Um, I have, uh, I, from childhood, it probably wasn't until we moved to Toronto. We came to Toronto from Montreal when I was like eight or nine years old, and we found an allergy doctor your background's fine, girl. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I keep pulling 
up my dress up. But um, I, I think I was like eight or nine when we, because uh, my, I was a kid. Uh, I was in like grade six. I had to eat, um, uh, what is the alternative for chocolate? I'm missing the name. Um, carob. 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 I was I the kid in too. school who was like, have you had carob? See, for me, it was also grade six. And that's where yeah. I started getting sick all the time and I got migraines yeah. too. Oh. And at this time too, I'm, I'm really lucky that my father was a doctor who believed in food allergies because he had food allergies. But I went, my parents took me to a doctor that said verbatim, there's no such thing as allergies. And my dad went, we're going to go see another doctor now. <laughs> oh my God. Well, there's a few of them that don't believe allergies are real. So, um, but yeah, no, it was great. And then I started getting sick all the time and I had to go on the elimination diet. And then, you know, you would go, I would go, I remember I would go to school with like rye wausau crackers and jam and like the weirdest things, like the rest of the kids would have sandwiches and, and cheese and I would have nothing like that. And they would all make fun of me and they'd be like, what's wrong with you? Allergy girl, allergy girl. Yeah, nobody and, wants the carob girl in their but, but did you notice, did you ever, are you friends with any of these people on Facebook? Do you, did you notice them start to post all these pictures of their gluten-free meals? And I, ooh, I, I definitely noticed a change in, in pattern with some friends who have, who have noticed, uh, yeah, over the years as you educate yourself a bit more. I, I honestly think um, having all of those things in my life, um, probably had me explore food a bit more, made me like a real foodie because you realize you don't always have to eat X, Y, and Z. There's versions, there's variations. You learn about how other foods can be made into other things. I, I think it was kind of a good thing. Oh, absolutely. Well, I, I think two things, cause I have, I feel like if I could eat ice cream every day, I would eat ice cream every day. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, I have little self-control. But at the same time, uh, yeah. So uh, I am allergic to wheat and yeast. Um, so I will go to uh, Ambrosia and buy Grainfields breads that I'm not, it's made with sourdough and kamut or, you know, I'll, I'll find alternatives. But I, I did find that, like, I would, I would go to restaurants and I would see people ordering things and I couldn't have any. And you see things on TV and I, I watch the Food Channel a lot and I would just get annoyed. So I would stand there in the kitchen going, well, if I mix rice flour with chickpea flour, can I get this consistency? And I would try to experiment. And it came out terrible sometimes. <laughs> but then you have a few times where you'd like, I now know how to make a muffin for myself. You know what I mean? And it's nice. Exactly. It gives you that, that survival skill because when you do go to a restaurant and you, you know, and I do see that one person at the table who has the crazy amount of alts and modifications on their chit that, you know, the kitchen's going insane because it's, it's kind of a pain in the ass. But, yeah, um, but when you can make a meal inclusive and that idea of like sitting around a table and everyone enjoying and nobody feeling left out, it's one of the kinds of things I dig when I host a dinner party um, and I invite a whole bunch of people and I've had friends who've had food allergies. I'm like, don't sweat. It gets me a challenge. And then I make a meal that everyone can eat. That's awesome. That's awesome. You so do you, do you know offhand, like, are you so familiar that you know offhand what you can substitute with what? I, I don't know offhand, but I, I do my research and I, you know, I, I go, you know, now you can, now you can go online, you know, um, which is great. <laughs> There's nothing else to do now. <laughs> but it, it's, yeah, it's just, you know, it's asking questions. Um, I used to work at this bakery in Toronto called Bunners, uh, a vegan gluten-free bakery, which it would, it would make me beam when little kids would come in. I remember this one kid in particular, parents brought him in, they found us online. This kid had never had a cupcake because had so many allergies, couldn't do it. And this kid was like, I can have this cupcake. This he was dumbfounded and gave a big thank you to everyone in the bakery. He was probably like seven or eight years old. I 
I cringe when I hear people talk about oh, allergies and get like all frustrated because you can still do other things. You don't have to exclude anybody from the dinner table if they've got an allergy, you know? Yeah, that's, that's, that's true. And you know, honestly, like uh, I, I try, I just don't tell people normally, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Cause I don't, I don't want to put anyone out. And especially, like, especially if it's a place where I would, I would bring my own dish and I, I would bring something that I'm not allergic to, obviously. So I know that there's at least one thing um, I can eat, but I always, I always feel weird. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's one of those things where I don't want to, I don't want to make anyone feel like they have to make it all inclusive, you know? Like, yeah. I mean, I appreciate that, you know, as, as somebody who, who is generally a big poster of, of things, I, I do appreciate that, but but I also want to be mindful enough when I'm making my invite list of just mentally yeah, sure. the, the checklist. Like I had a you period. Know I would tell, you know me. <laughs> you know, yeah, no, I, no, I, yeah. But I but had a period really of time sweet. of doing like, oh, sorry, that's go ahead. A, no, but that's really sweet and inclusive and considerate. And then you have people that come in that are like, wow, like that's, that's really amazing that I actually really feel like I belong here. Yeah, because having these things, having these intolerances, like the the chamomile, the celery, you do sort of feel like you walk into a room like, uh, yeah, you're going to ask the food allergy question. <laughs> How much time do you have? Like, yes, yes. And then it's also one of these things where this, I don't know how to explain it. The second I start to make the list, I see the look in people's eyes, like, how are you alive? You know, and. of people that grew out of a nut and peanut allergy. You had, was it anaphylaxis though? Was it anaphylactic? Anaphylactic. I had the, I had the, I had the needle. I had to ask boys questions on dates. Things like, have you had peanuts at any point in this day? Without assuming there would be making out, you know? Um, oh my God. Yeah. I would freak out at the ballpark because I love going to see baseball games. I would panic when people would open the bags of nuts because you can take so a reaction. I'll never forget. My friend went to an ice cream truck one time, got an ice cream, got some sprinkles on it, had an anaphylactic reaction because a fraction of a nut had fallen in with the sprinkles. Yeah. And it, it's, yeah. It, it's terrifying. It's it, terrifying. It, I lived a, great portion of my life in abject terror of a peanut or a nut coming anywhere near me so um i never did the thing after high school of like try like tropesing through europe you know traipsing through europe because i was afraid of food you know well i was afraid of being murdered but there's i mean food too yeah i get that but yeah <laughs> but somehow and no one really seems to know how, but I I grew out of it. It's I don't know where I was going with that story originally. No, but that's amazing. Happened. Yeah. Did, did, how long did it take you to grow out? Like how did you and you retested yourself then at a certain age and you just I got retested by my doctor. Uh, she said, you know what? It's been about ten years. Let's just do another batch of testing. See where your body's at. Uh, this was my, you know, my GP, my family doctor. She was like, let's send you for that. And um, first test of of the skin, I think, was the first one they did. I was like, oh, that's curious. Like any of the nuts, nothing. Nothing. Wow. And uh, it was a three-month process. It was the skin test. Then I had to go for blood work because if you have a nut allergy, from what I know, you show different properties in your blood than than someone else would. That was gone. And then uh, the final thing was a doctor supervised peanut butter uh, snack. I had to take a jar of peanut butter to this doctor and I couldn't get the spoon in my mouth because I was so scared. It was like, Kelly, you have to, you have to eat this. <laughs> and um, I'm okay. I, uh, the, the one thing I will say, um, I've mentioned on the show how much I hate walnuts. Walnuts, I don't like the texture. They kind of freak me out mentally. So that's the one thing I've stayed away from. I, I don't like those at all. Okay. They're, they're, they're not the best. Nut. They're not, in my opinion, they're not bad, but they're not the best nut. Like they're, they're no pecan. You know what I mean? Oh, there was they, a period. They be, but they want to be pecans, but they can't be. They're no pecan. 
there was a period on my Facebook status uh, back in the day where your Facebook would be like, you know, Amanda is, or, uh, you know, they would have that prompt. Right. Every Facebook status was like, guys, have you had almonds? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> almonds are so good, though. They really are. Yeah, cashews are yummy. Oh, cashews are real. Ca- oh, I, I haven't know. had cashews in ages. It's like this, this door cashews. opened up for me. It, it's really weird. It. Uh, I'm very grateful. I've been told I will never revert back to being anaphylactic. I just have to watch my consumption. They said, don't go crazy, but you can add them in your things. And I've made things on the show with peanuts and nuts, and I'm fine. Um, wow. Having allergies has definitely made me more empathetic. Yeah. I, I would say that. Um, just out of curiosity, is there any other allergy you've grown out of or any allergy that you found out about after you were older or after a certain age? I've grown into the nightshade thing. The Me too. is new, the mushrooms, the peppers. Um, uh, I can't do soy. I mean, I can't. And I do love eating edamame and I do like the occasional tofu cheesecake slice. Um, soy but, sauce is in so much foods, you know, and it's, uh, yeah. I, what's, the, your, what's your reaction the, to it? I look like I'm pregnant. Oh, God. I am so gassy. I am so, a fart factory. If I <laughs> that is, that is, uh, that's farty. That's very farty. That's what that is. No, that's terrible. I'm sorry. I, I'm so gross. <laughs> I was told I had a soy allergy at one point. And I never had an issue with soy. I, d- I don't know what that is. I honestly, I honestly would put it down to the the crap that gets in drinking water, the stuff that gets in our environment. I think all the chemicals that were around on a daily basis does something to the, the computer inside and maybe reactions go a certain way. Um, you can certainly grow into allergies. You can grow out of some of them. Um, but hey, being being home and cooking more, your your body's kind of taking a bit of a break from maybe some other things that you'd be putting into it. Absolutely, absolutely. And then, of course, because it's cheap, I've I've stocked up on rice. So I've been going through like a lot, a lot of rice. And yeah. when you, you know, when you go on the elimination diet, that's the one thing they allow you to have. So. <laughs> I know it's not a problem, right? Like, yeah. Oh my gosh. When we're able to socialize again and you can come over and be in the kitchen, let's do something up with carob. Let's bring carob back. I think we'll have to add cocoa powder to make it palatable, though, because do you remember eating carob? Do you remember I it? it out. <laughs> Good for you. I wish I could. No, it's, it's, <gasps> we could, though. It's terrible. I feel like if it was in a, a, a muffin, may, like in something else, or maybe it would just ruin it. I don't know. Well, you know what? I, I, let, let's try to figure it out. Like, we'll, we'll talk, maybe try to find some kind of like, you know, veggie sort of thing we can do. Maybe like a zucchini muffin. Uh, sure. And we'll, we'll figure that out. But, but yeah, I love that we've talked food allergies today. Cause <laughs> Me too. People with food allergies matter. That we do. We do. And I, I, th- I still think it's amazing that we have some of the same food allergies. That's Especially that's, the chamomile. Yeah. Chamomile and lavender, it's, yeah. I will say lavender I'm okay with. My body right. is very, um, very hyper-specific, like, like the, the, the thing with the cow's milk. Uh, I can't eat figs. Uh, it's very, like... But I can eat other things in the family of those. It you can have it. dates, though. I can eat all the dates I want. Figs, my mouth gets itchy. Huh, that's interesting. Okay. I don't, I don't know. I'm. The running joke in the family is that when we we say something like, "Oh, we're you know this way or that way," my dad's like, "Well, we're Latvian," you know. <laughs> <laughs> that that explains everything. That explains everything, right? Thank you, Amanda, for joining me today. This was 
Thank you so much for having me. This was a lot of fun and I miss you. As always, I miss you too. And I still want to, we'll do the carob thing, but I still want to do the, the strawberry cheesecake thing too. Maybe we'll, we'll shave some carob on top. Oh God, that would ruin it. Yes. <laughs>